Can you pronounce these words from the Quran? And if you can, did it take you long to get the hang of pronouncing such words? Well, it is actually one of the more common problems when reciting the Quran for non-Arabs and even for some Arabs as well, which is pronouncing words that are not commonly used or repeated in the Quran very often, like these three here, which are mentioned only once each in the entire book, which makes it difficult to remember how to pronounce them properly if you don't get to read them often enough. And sometimes, even when you hear them pronounced, it might still be difficult to repeat after and pronounce it properly. But this is gonna be the end of this problem, inshallah. Because in this lesson, I will try and show you a method that can, inshallah, help you deal more effectively with longer or difficult to pronounce words in the Quran. And just for clarity, the Quran doesn't contain difficulties by itself because Allah has made it easy for us to learn and remember. So this word just refers to those who still yet to learn how to pronounce certain words in the Qur'an. But let's first understand why it is difficult to pronounce certain words in Arabic. And this will make understanding this method or trick much easier and faster, inshallah. There are two main reasons why this could happen. The first reason is when you have to make one or two switches between vowel and consonant state within one word. So, it is a word that contains one or more consonants, followed and preceded by vowel sounds. Like this word, for example, where the kaf is preceded by fatha and followed by kasra, and the ya preceded by kasra and followed by fatha. Obviously, I'm not suggesting that the ya is a consonant sound, but since it doesn't have a short vowel on top or under it, I'm giving it the same treatment. And the second reason is when you have to switch between full and empty mouth letters in the same word. So in a word like irtada, there is an empty mouth letter, and then full, then empty, and then full again. But in this lesson, I will be addressing the first phenomenon and how to deal with it. And the second will be left for a future lesson, inshallah. So when you have to switch between consonant and vowel sounds, why would that be a problem? Well, you see, the problem is that when a sound is in a consonant state, so has sukun, its characteristics appear fully. And that's why 99% of the tajweed rules are applied when a letter has sukun. So, idgham, ikhfa, iqlab, qalqala, idhar, and the meme sakina rules, and many others, all concern letters that have sukun. So, a letter in consonant state requires your attention. Another reason why this creates a difficulty is that when encountering a sukun in a word, it kind of breaks the rhythm of how you pronounce the vowels in a word, since short vowels get the same length and value. So, in this word, we say li, yu, ri, ya, hu, ma. Notice how you move from one letter to another rather easily when they all have a vowel of the same length. Now, the existence of sukun kind of disturbs this flow of sounds. But then how can we get over this problem? Well, this is when we use a very simple trick. When you come across a word that you're struggling with pronouncing it, you should focus on where the sukun is in the word. This sukun will split the word into two or three parts, making the sukun kind of a checkpoint. And here I gotta remind you that sukun in the Quran will take different shapes. So it will appear as this sign, or incorporated with the sign of shadda since the first letter of which will always have sukun, or when a long vowel, so alif, waw, or ya, have no sign at all. So these mean that there is a sukun. And when you want to learn how to pronounce a word and train yourself, locate the sukun in the word, and pronounce that part of the word until you get to the sukun point, 
Once you get the hang of that part, move to the next and then link them all together to pronounce the final word. When you do that, you will notice that you will get to pronounce longer and more difficult words much faster than if you try to pronounce them all in one go. So, how does that work in practice? Well, let's see these examples. This word here, we have the calf that has sukun, so this is going to be the first part to practice, then the second part is going to be right here, and then the third part. So, fasayek, fasayek, fi, fi, fasayek, fi, kahum, kahum, fasayek, fi, kahum. If you're a beginner, this process could take some time, but this is basically the steps that you have to take to pronounce a word of that length. You will also notice that when you practice this way, it will give you a chance to pronounce the hems of the letter kef in this case, so it will be audible and properly applied when you pronounce the entire word. It will also make it easier for you to remember applying the natural med properly on a letter like the ye in that example. One more example. The sukun is located right here, so this means that we're gonna do this word in two steps. And here, applying qalqala properly on the ta becomes easier to do. And you will find yourself having more control over the pronunciation of the word entirely. One more example. Yef. Yef Tinan Yef Tinan Nakum Yef Tinan Nakum Ya Bani Adam La Yef Tinan Nakum Shaytan so here in this case, we pronounce the word in three stages. Yef, tinen, nekum. So the noon here has shadda, which means that the first noon is a noon sekina, and the second noon has fatha on it. So when you pronounce the entire word, you have to remember to apply ghunna of two counts. Yef, tinen, nekum. So, Make sure to keep an eye for the three variations of sukun in any word you're trying to learn how to pronounce properly. The sukun sign, the shadda, and the no sukun on long vowels. And remember, no sukun on letters other than the long vowels may indicate that the letter is hidden or fused with the letter coming after it. So this word here, for example, the qaf has no sign at all, However, because it is not one of the long vowel letters, it means that it is fused or hidden with the letter coming after it. In this case, it is idgham. So we say, nakhlukum, nakhlukum. The qaf is not pronounced at all. And I explained this case in this lesson. So check it out if you want to learn more information about that topic. And finally, don't forget that all short vowels, fatha, Dhamma and Kasra will get the same length when pronouncing them. 
and that long vowels or natural med will be double that amount. Keeping this in mind and keeping this proportion intact while reciting the Qur'an will make a lot of words much easier to pronounce and would make it possible to apply and use this method to practice reading the Qur'an. And if you want to make sure, if you're getting everything right in terms of the proportion between the short vowels and the long vowels, then I highly recommend watching this lesson. Thanks for watching. If you want to start your journey to learn the Tajweed of the Qur'an, you can click on this link. And if you want to understand the Qur'an in Arabic, then you should click on that link. And finally, I hope you've learned something new today, and I will see you next time.